just talking, barking. Let's roll into it. Mika, how you doing, brother? Thank you so much for jumping in. Good, good to see you, mate. Yeah, very good. The power of connections. And obviously, uh, originally knowing you from school days, a couple of years older than me, but from Mighty Brinte. The, the good old Brinte, eh? <laughs> mate, what a journey you've been on. Well, both of us, but more importantly, the journey you've been on. It's, um, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Like you said, mate, for both of us, I think, well, you left, what, 10 years ago to Australia. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of people back home, I think for you as well, would always ask me like, what is it like living over in Thailand or what is it like living over in Australia? Um, and it's difficult to explain to people as, as you know, who, who might just come on holiday for like a month or two months or whatever, but we, to spend now 13 years in Thailand, it's, it's, it's actually my home anyway, but it's, it's been an unbelievable journey, especially obviously on the field with football, but um, outside of it as well, I've done really well. So I'm really happy with that, but yeah, I couldn't have, I couldn't have like written the best story for myself, really. To be fair, yeah. To be fair, mate. Like, I know everyone from, from back home. Whenever we talk about Mika, you, you obviously yourself <laughs> slagging <laughs> me off, slagging me off again. Yeah, yeah, slagging off again. <laughs> <laughs> we go fair play to him, mate. You've done amazing, and it's really, really rewarding because you haven't gone the normal path of football, as in you know. Yeah. Well, obviously, you went to Cardiff yeah. City, and and for a lot of people, after that ending, it's kind of like, well, where's next? But you, um. Yeah. Probably, probably shows the character of you as a person, Mika. Just you never give up on a dream. Yeah, I'll be honest though. Um, I kind of did give up a little bit at the, at the very start in terms of after I left Cardiff, um, as I was eighteen. Um, obviously, I had a two-year scholarship, and then after that, I think that was a bigger disappointment in myself in terms of not getting that new deal. Cardiff being from Bridgend, obviously the whole family sports Cardiff. Being a Cardiff for four or five years, thinking you know that's where you want to obviously progress mm. in terms of football, um, and then obviously when I didn't get released, oh wait, when I did get released, um, it came to a moment where what's next? Um, and I think that was people always ask me like, what's what's your biggest disappointment in life in terms of football, mm. or the, your biggest um, point in career where you think it was the biggest downer? You know, and I think probably that time because I, I could just remember the time, you know, I didn't know what to do next. I didn't know where to carry on playing. I didn't know where to go to uni. I didn't know if I want to go back to Thailand. I, I really didn't know. And I think it took me a whole month, obviously the summer and and being back in Bajan with all the boys. I think, you know, I just went partying and enjoying yourself, 18 year old lad, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it just, I just decided to go to university. But I think that was probably going to uni, I'll be honest, was probably taking the easy way out because I just don't want to be disappointed again by going on trial because I had offers to go to Bristol City, Bristol Rovers, Plymouth, you know, all these clubs, you know, like Cheltenham, all these clubs nearby because um, I was playing for Cardiff. Uh, we were in the top tier in terms mm -hmm. of the academy and all these clubs at the time knew I was playing for the Wales in 17 and they obviously wanted me, on, some of them were proper interest, some of them wanted me on, on trial and I'll be honest, I just didn't want a disappointment. I just don't want to know. So I just thought, you know, I'll go for, to uni for, for two years. And that was, uh, that was it, really. I went to uni and, and carry on playing at, well, back then. It was having a lead over the boys in Penamont, you know what I mean? So just, just to get the fun back into it, because obviously leaving Cardiff, I got a bit sad. And obviously mm -hmm. that's, that, was, that was the biggest stumbling block in my career, I think. Yeah, wow. It's so true what you just said then, the regarding, um, the, obviously, the more professional the level gets, <laughs> Not so much, well, would you say the fun, I found the more serious it gets and the high pressure things get. Yeah. You get those setbacks, you know, you, you want to go back to the roots of the why of why we play. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you relate to that at all? Obviously, going That's what it was. It was, it was exactly that, mate, to be honest with you, because at the time, Cardiff went through a massive change. I don't, knew, I don't remember, I don't know if you'll recall, but my year, really, everybody got released of having Chris Gunther just because they were trying to make money. Right. for Jimmy Floyd Asabank and uh, Robbie Fowler to come in. And so they wasn't taking any, you know, young boys on a, to be young pros because um, normally you have that year after scholarship to get a one-year pro just to see if you can develop an extra year. And all of us got released. And like I said, I just, at the time, I thought, you know, a lot of the boys got released at the same time as me as well. And we just all went to play in the Welsh League. So at the time, it was, I remember when we all went to Wallaido, I was like 18, we were all 18 years old, for, like either play for Wales at the 17 mm -hmm. level or play for Cardiff, play for Swansea. And we all just kind of came and 
and made a team together in in in, in um in Avonlea, and we actually won the Welsh Cup. We were the youngest, I think, youngest team to win the Welsh Cup in the Welsh League Cup. I mean, not the Welsh Cup, yeah, the Welsh yeah. League Cup. You know, in the so it's it's yeah, it was fun. It was a great year. I think that's what I think that that year made me obviously want to go back into professional football. Just I realized that you know, in an, in the nicest of way, I don't want to be playing Welsh, you know, Division One for the rest of my life. Right. Um, so I think that was that was actually something I needed just to show me that this is what you really want. And obviously that kicked me keep me back into professional football and give me the opportunity to come back to Thailand at the time to, to, to go back into full time. Yeah, wow. It's amazing that is. And it just, yeah, sometimes our setbacks are our biggest, biggest things that bring yeah. us back into our, you know, moving forward again, like a spring, it's like yeah. a company springing us back into action. And obviously, yeah, you know, and you know, on. sorry, and you know, it's like when we're young, you know, obviously, you know, you're the same, you know, rugby has always been like, you know, all of this, all of that, you know, and let's, let's be honest, when we are young age, everyone always looks at us like, oh yeah, you'll, you'll make it. And a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people are waiting, waiting for you to fail. Oh yeah. It's because you're either, you, because you either, you know, a lot of jealousy, you know, for me, I find it a lot of that back because obviously I had, I had the upbringing of being in Thailand for the first 10 years of my life where the culture is a little bit different. And I mean, back in the UK where, again, it's a different culture. It's very much like, you know, everybody pushing each other there's a lot of jealousy and stuff like that and you know people are just obviously a lot of time they're not really happy for you to succeed but they're obviously waiting for you to fail just to say oh yeah I knew you wouldn't be able to do it and you know us being how we were back then I can remember being 17, 18 you know you're not just doing it for yourself you're obviously trying to do it to prove that people are wrong but if you look mm -hmm. at it from a different mentality you should just focus on yourself really but being 17, 18 it's, it's not that easy to look back and then say oh I should have done this or that because you're growing up in that environment. It's you know it's doggy dog world, and at that time, like I said, I just don't want to fail more than at the time. I remember I don't want to fail again, rather than I really want to succeed. Mm. But I knew I had in myself what I want to do, what I want to be, and I just needed that maybe six months to realize that yeah, you know, like in a nicer way, like I don't really care what the people think. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna go back to it and have a go at it, and I know what I can do, and just focus on that. But I think because of the first major setback. You know, it's always, it's always difficult with the first major step back because everything in your life, whether it's been like school team, football, rugby, everyone always say, oh, yeah, he's class, he's class. He's, you know, it's, you know how it is. Oh, for sure. And uh, I think, yeah, that was the biggest disappointment, I think, just because I just thought, you know, other people probably just are probably happy now. And so it's one of those <laughs> ones, really. It's a weird one. I can relate to that so much. <clears throat> I think it took me a lot longer to realize it, though. What I realized when people wanted to see you fail was actually a reflection of themselves because they weren't capable. Yeah. And once yeah. I realized that it was kind of like a smiling moment that go, it took a weight off my chest because yeah, of course, when you're younger, your self-awareness to those things isn't quite there. So you, you just go and I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to prove you wrong. And you yeah, know, some of those people in that car city situation would have gone, Fuck, I told you so, you know, cause that's a massive yeah. tool to play for Cardiff. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah couple of times a question but th th you don't realize those character those moments there define you as a person then th those hardships yeah um take you to that next level then and um it's pretty powerful would you say obviously it's exterior things but would you say your family are very like were they a, a family where they're pushing you to do succeed or were they like you do whatever you want Mika if I'm if I'm really honest I'd probably say no I'd probably say it was more so in terms of just myself I think my family were like you know whatever you think whatever you want to do whatever makes you happy I think from the age of 16 since I was at Cardiff um you know you kind of grown up you know in uh, you have to grow up with early doors really because I was in professional setup I was working full time you're training every day you're at the age of 16 you're there um you're pretty much taking care of yourself you know family is always going to be there but when it comes to decisions in terms of your life and football Mm. I think any day is your decision. You know, you always have family saying, yeah, whatever you think is best. You know, they, they you know, you being 17, 18, you kind of think you know what's, what's best for yourself anyway. You know, you obviously ask for advice here and there. But I think in terms of the family side, of it, I think people just said, you know, whatever you think, you know, you, you're mature enough. You know, you, I would like to think that I'm uh, a type of person who can make my own decisions, if you know what I mean. So mm. I think, the people around me, of course, they always support what I decided to do, and especially when I decided to go to university, I just knew it was, it was, it was a step that I I wanted to take in terms of, you know, those two years having something behind me, which right now, mm. right now, by the age of thirty four, I'm actually using that two years to go back and do my A license right now, and I, 
the people I met in the university doing the football coaching performance course, doing my C license, B license back then, it allows me now, 15 mm-hmm. years later, to go back and do my A license, which I'm doing right now. So Amazing. everything kinds of everything kind of works itself in, in you know in, in a big circle and and yeah, I think it was the right decision. I think it was in the, at the end of the day it was my decision. And like I said, I think I made the decision for myself just to make sure that to keep keep going and and do the thing. At least if I fail, I fail because I want to fail, not because I'm trying to prove everybody else right or wrong. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to make sure that I did it for myself and have no regrets. And I yeah. think that's what I had the first six months after stopping, really. Mm. I think one of my mentors once said to me, if you're ever going to fail, fail forward, fail trying instead of failing backwards, you know? Exactly, exactly. And I think with everyone, you know, I'm looking at my mates back home, you know, you can never compare life and situation. I had a great opportunity to have the time to play, obviously, because I'm half Thai. So obviously, with the Thai passport, I came back here and, and played in the league. But a lot of boys, great footballers, great rugby players, you know exactly what it is. Sometimes mm. if they fail once, they they just kind of just stop and yeah. just decide to either go play the locals with the boys for the next 10, 15 years, thinking this uh it's the next best thing to do, but you know, I'm sure for the next generation, I would say, get out of Bridgend, get out of Wales, experience <laughs> life outside. Yeah. And you know, I think five times out of ten, the people will probably won't want to come back. Mm, so true. So I would, I, I would say that you know. I, I know I agree with you, man. I think everyone needs to get out that you know the goldfish bowl of our area and yep. and, and evolve yep. as a person because I think so. Yep. As you know, Mika, we can. We can sit in comfort as well, the comfort of feeling good in an area, yeah. like a big fish in a small yeah. pond. Exactly. Get out the big wild world out there and realize what's there. But um, moving forward for yourself, so after Avonlea, though, is that where the offer then after that went to go to Thailand? Yeah, no, I think that the, the offer to Thailand came actually, it came pretty much straight away as well um, when I left Cardiff. But I just knew being 18, I didn't really want to do that yet. I want to enjoy myself with my friends, go to university. After the first year, the Thai national team in the 19s called me up and said, you know, do you want to come back to play with the national team? I said, no, I want to have another year in uni. And then I decided after my second year, okay, this year I'll go back to Thailand at the age of, yeah, just before I was turning 20, really. Mm. I said, yeah, I'll go back now just to um, just have a go at it. And I went to Thailand. I came back home because obviously I'm from Thailand as well. I'm half mm. Thai. Lived here in the first 10 years of my life before I went back to Bajan. Um, So I was coming back on holiday anyway. And when I was here during that summer after the second year uni, I thought, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see what it's like. Have a month here, train with one of the teams that wanted me, one of the top teams, and really enjoyed it. Just didn't realize how good the, the level was, the league was, the fans, the professionalism. I thought, yeah, I'll give it a year. And they offered me three years, but I said, no, I just want to take a year. Just just like it's like a gap year for me. I could go back to uni to finish my third year. 13 years later, I'm still here. So <laughs> something must have gone right. So that's that's what it was, really. It was, just, it was year after year after year, really. Just, just wanted to make uh-huh. sure that. I stayed, you know. Well, you, you, you quickly became a star over there, mate. That's the, the <laughs> not sugar-coated. How, mm. from someone from, you know, from, from Bridgend, to say then, to go over there and then just probably experience some of the highs you probably never experienced before? No. But how do you go with managing that? I'll be honest, the first two, three years, it was like, almost like, it was like, wow, this is unbelievable. So many fans, billboards. the media, the interview, the billboards. Um, I was like being half Thai, to be able to speak Thai. For them, it was, it was, it was different because obviously as being a half, being the first half boy playing in the league and, and it was like, for them, it was like a new, I don't know, it was like a, like a new, new pin that was in the guy. It was like weird for me. I was like, I didn't look at myself that way at all, but for the fans, I just couldn't believe how crazy they were. Mm. The fans were really honest. And it was fun the first two years, I'll be honest with you. And I just thought yeah, it was new. And then afterwards, you just realized, yeah, this is just part of the game. And just enjoyed it. And I just really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because well, you... I'm what. Because <laughs> if you compared it to obviously coming from the card, if you're still in the youth set up there, but then you go, over, <clears> is the fan base totally different? Oh. My first year in Mung Tong, 10,000, 8,000, 5,000. We had a final. It was like just over 20,000. It was unbelievable. First year. I was like, this is where I want to be in. This environment. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I had a bad fall for the last two days. So <laughs> oh, mate, I'm just going to ask you. No, mate, that's fine. The, the struggle I've had on to get this no. this place. Yeah, I mean, no, it's fine. Like, 
the fan the first year I was I was enjoying it so much. I was saying to my family back home in the gym, I was like, you won't believe it. And I remember I was obviously posting photos and people were like, you were in Lyon last year. 200 fans on, you know, down, down Brain Ferry and down the Penabond and Goitra and some of that. And it's now you're playing in Bangkok with 15,000 fans. You know, it's, it's hard to explain. And it's like, I just told myself after the first year, I said, I can't go back now. Mm. And I had offers to stay and I spoke to my family. I said, look, I might just stay another year. It's just so good. And the money side, it wasn't bad as well. And I said, you know, it's, it just makes sense. It's professional, it's full time, and it's just the whole package. All, of course, you know, it's not obviously not being back home playing professionally in Championship mm-hmm. or League One. But I can honestly say, Thailand football before they were in the league. So the the media, the TV, all games are live on TV. You know, the media follows his own league. Like everything was just so good in terms of that side of it. That. It was such an enjoyable experience of being 20, 21 years old. Yeah. It was something that was like living in Bangkok by myself. I was like, it was an opportunity just, just to keep on like riding it really and just enjoying it. And of course, you know, you got to do the business on the field, which I was happy to say that I was obviously enjoying and playing a lot of games and doing quite well. So that kept me here for until now, really. Yeah. You, you need to realize as well, I hope you do realize, Amika, that uh, you, you don't realize how many people you've impacted that have that dream, that desire, and, you know, shows that, you know, if we do have obstacles in the way in our road, that you can still turn up and keep going forward. And um, I hope you know that, mate. I know sometimes... Yeah, we- no, I, pre- I appreciate no, I appreciate that. Honestly, a lot, of, a lot of my friends are the same thing. Like, you know, obviously a lot of boys from the gym know who I am, where I came from, to where I have, you know, I haven't changed, but I think a lot of people said they just can't believe I kept going by myself, you know, because... And the day after I was 20, I was pretty much by myself here in Thailand. Yeah. And there was times where my mates are back home, going out, going partying in uni and going holiday here and there. And I'm stuck, you know, in a room in Bangkok by myself playing a team halfway across the country, which I never heard of. And this, <clears throat> it was one of the sacrifices. And, you know, I'm still sacrificing it now. I'm 30, 34, but all these sacrifices because of the love of the game and obviously for everything that I've done. And, and like I said, you know, I, I've, I've had no regrets and I'm very grateful. And a lot of people I said to them before, don't let one person or two person in your life say to you, you can't do something or say you're not good enough because it's just maybe one person's opinion or two person's opinion. Right. So um, that's all there is. You know, sometimes you might have unlucky me a coach who don't like you, releases you. Doesn't mean you're shit. Yeah. So, so simple true. as that, really. Just one moment. <laughs> that's all you need, right? Like there's, there's a part of just that t- right timing the right coach yeah. because how many man we have so many coaches over there like I've had so many coaches who didn't agree with me but and that's okay that's their opinion and you've exactly. got to bite the exactly. bullet sometimes and, and try, try another avenue um, and I think one thing you just said then I can resonate with massively is sacrifices um, if you ever want to do something in life which is purposeful and has some meaning to it you've got to make sacrifices like how many how, how many lads holidays have I missed out on how many times have I seen amazing things happen I've missed out on and you've you know, but you got to, you know what I'm saying, so. Mate, it's like I said, you know, never had really a boys holiday. You know, especially when I came over to Thailand. My season ran from February until November, so it was half this week. always smack bang in the middle of my season. Yeah. Um, Miss birthdays, Christmas, weddings, you know, friends' weddings. It's it's one of those moments where you can't just say, oh, I have a game this weekend, can I miss it? Mm. So, you know, these are, these are sacrifices we made, but obviously I will never never say that, oh my God, you know, my life is terrible because football, being a footballer, playing professionally, doing things you love, getting paid very well, it's the best job in the world. Correct. So you can't have everything in life and, you know, these sacrifices, they make it up for the times when you have time off and enjoy with your family and sort of that. And yeah, I think a sacrifice that is this worth it for me and, you know, people go realize that, you know, you can't have everything your own way. Mm. Who's been someone you've looked up to as in someone who's been <clears throat> guidance or a mentor? And why? Oh, that's a hard, that's a... Welcome to the hot that's seat. A, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a difficult one. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I had, a, I had an interview on TV the other day and asked, someone asked me the same question, obviously, someone who I knew. And I'll be honest, it was a difficult one because 
I grew up in Bujian with our father, really, because my father was in Thailand. Um, so my mum brought me back there. I would probably say my granddad was one of the one of the guys who I looked up to the most. And obviously, he actually recently passed away. So it's one of those ones where it's a weird one because we were growing up in Bujian. Um, I left Thailand, came back there with my mum, with my me and my brother, and yeah, just my mum by herself, really. And I think my grand was she came to watch me play football all the time down the gym, down Newbridge Field, and everywhere when he was always there. So he was always someone I think I took a lot from because he was always like you know man up, you know, <laughs> you know one of those style like you know it's it's one of those ones where he's he was tough, but he was tough in a good way, and I think he just made me tough for who I am, and you know just just not to rely on sometimes on other people too much, be your own self, make your own path. Mm. And of course, you know, just got to take care of a lot of people. So I think he's someone who I would probably say that I look up to one of the most. Amazing. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, what about yourself? What about yourself? Someone I look up to most. Obviously, because we know we, we, we're both athletes. Yeah. You know, we always have the, oh, yeah, Steven Gerrard or something yeah. like this and that. But... You always have that one person in your life. You always say, "Oh, I hope I don't let him down, or I don't let mm. her down, or something like that." So it's so good, really good question. I've asked you without even considering it myself, but I'd say, um, probably just it would always be family, mate. Like growing up, yeah, sacrifices yeah. You did for me. But I think as well, I I spoke about this previously, like. My biggest fear at the same time was like a, it was a, a great and a bad thing because I never wanted to let them down. Like yeah, that fear of from a young age, like you talked about earlier in the chat, is or oh, Mika or oh, Ollie's gonna make it or oh, Mika's gonna make it, you know, blah blah blah. And it was yeah. this, it was this exterior pressure that I felt that without even saying the word, I felt that this. If I didn't make it, it would have been <clears> hard. Um, but yeah. They were my biggest drivers, but they were probably the people I want to make them the proudest. But yeah. yeah. And and then and then when I went away, it was kind of self-motivated. Like I don't know about you when you went to Thailand, it was a lot of times where I had to motivate myself. Like it wasn't like a yeah, you know, and, and you, you you know, you can get in a bit of a cycle when you're really young going to another country. Like I left when I was nineteen, just the the, the you know, the the why behind everything had to be extremely strong. Yeah. So. No, there was moments here in Thailand. I was always by myself and thinking, "Is it worth it?" You know why we like this go. It's gonna be tough. You know, in sports, you go through tough moments all the time. You know, after every win is a high, after every low is uh, every loss is a low. And mm. I think just just realizing that they're not giving up was was something that I always look back on and say, "Yeah, that's, that's, I'm proud of myself for that." Because, you know, being by yourself, sometimes you are by yourself, you mm. know, here, you know, seven hours, eight hours ahead of back home. Um, back, you know, and it's, you know, trying to speak to friends, family back then, it's, it's, it wasn't as easy as now with like, you know, FaceTime and stuff like that, you got to wait for MSN or Skype and stuff like that. So, <laughs> right. you know, back back then it wasn't easy, you know, 15 years ago. So it's uh, it's something I'm proud of. I'm, I always say to myself, I'm proud of myself in terms of how I stayed to it and I stuck at it through the tough times. And, and people always see the success story, but they don't see how hard we were to get where we are. They don't see it, the sacrifice we made, you know, um, right. the daily lifestyle, what we do, every, you know, daily in terms of our training, our eating, our, our diet. And so that's, you know, it's everything that you do to, to give yourself the best chance of, of succeeding. And, you know, people always say, oh, um, the easy and or, or oh because you're so lucky you know you have this you have but you know you make your own luck I feel you know you make your own luck in terms of eating I said to everyone the way I eat now and the way I train now of course they will change and, and differ a little bit in terms of with age and experience and that, but my attitude and my the way I train and the way I take care of my body hasn't changed since I was 18 mm. and you know the when I what time I wake up what I do when I eat how much I eat when I when I drink when I don't drink it's when I rest it's, Everything is always geared around football, and my family knows that, and you know my wife knows that, and and everyone is it's important to have the people around you that support that, and you know you got friends, you got to get people around you, friends to support that because you know it's so easy to get straight away by influences and and stuff like that, and you know end of the day you just got to stick to what's right for you and the people around you and support you are the, are the people who who care about you the most. So true. Do you, how would you how do you go about the, like dealing with the anxieties and the nerves of a game and just trying to channel that in, especially in the big games, you know, the rival matches or you know finals? I'll be honest. I, at the very start, I never really got nervous playing football. 
um, um, it was a weird one because I enjoyed it so much that, and I knew I was when I go into the games. I was if I did bad or if I did well or whatever. It was just it was just a game really. Yeah. And I think the more I stayed in town, the, the the more the higher I played, the more fans, the more the the media, the more the 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 money that was involved in the game and then you realize the bigger contract, you know, people are buying, you know, I was getting bought for, you know, sometimes 40, 50,000 pounds. And, and at the time, it doesn't seem a lot, there's a lot of money over oh, here in Thailand. You think, oh, definitely it is. And then, and then you, and then you start having, you know, media, sometimes bad game being scrutinized because you don't really, I never really read the, you know, I never really read the media and stuff like that. And all, all, every time you have a good game, you have a look, oh, how, you know, I want to see now how, how well I've done. When you have a bad game, you don't want to see. But sometimes, when it's right there in front of you, I think more so the external pressure from the fans mm. or what they're saying about you gets you down more than what actually was what is the nerves before the game. Mm. So, you know, I, one of my one of the best advice my my agent ever told me he said, "Mitch, never read the, the media, never read the paper, never do it." I guess because you know it could be a twelve year old kid back home listening to someone saying something and then typing exactly exactly what they're saying. They don't even know anything about football and everything about rugby. And then you read that and you take it to heart, like, oh my God, I can't believe this guy is saying that I'm the worst player he's ever seen in his life. Yeah. Then, like it's just stuff like that. So it's so true. I think I think I, I don't really get nervous. I think it was the stage where I was caring a lot about what the fans would say if I had a bad game or or having like stuff like that really more so. And I would say the the only time I got nervous was probably for Thai national team in the, in the penalty shootout in one of the semi-finals of the competition. I could I always remember that moment. It was like sixty thousand people in the stadium, you know, half you know, millions of people in the area, say like sixty million people watching in the country. And I'm like, that moment. Every now I look. Every time I think back about that moment, my my palms sweat. Like just thinking about the mm-hmm. moment, I know exactly how I felt. It's the only moment I've ever felt nervous at the at that moment and looking back I'm still getting nervous about it it's weird <laughs> amazing though it's, it's a weird it's feeling it's not why yeah yeah it's just what it is I think it's it's one of, it's obviously representing your country but yeah with the nerves I think with age and mm. I can't really recall going back how I really felt before mm. because I remember I just enjoyed the game so much that I didn't really get nervous you have nerves it's good nerves but it wasn't like making me stressed at the fact that Oh my god, I'm I'm gonna be like it was it was like I was always excited, I was always enjoying. It was a nice nerve, I would say. But um now being, you know, 33, 34, played over 15, 10, 15 years in the Thai Premier League, over three hundred games, it's 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 not nerves anymore, it's just excitement really. It's mm. it's part of the game. But I would say it's a good it's a good nerve to have, you know, because you always gotta be in your toes, otherwise you're not you're not doing the thing you love then. Of course, of course. How about yourself? How about yourself? Do you ever get nervous in games? And uh... um, I think as I got older, than, when I was younger, it was just the nerves of probably so young and getting that opportunity. And I was just getting mm-hmm. nervous of making sure I fill the boots of the person before me. But as I get older, it was probably more about, um, I'd get like the little anxieties of injuries, like niggles, and then going, okay. um, what would that, you know, how would that correlate into the game? But then I think I used to just, with those thoughts, you know, three three ACL surgeries on the same knee. Um, ankle. Three ACL? Yeah, three ACLs on the right knee. My um, God. Yeah, so like patella, hamstring, two hamstring grafts and a patella rico. You know, it, you start questioning stuff with it. But then I think I, I got into the place, I got, I'm, I'm very big into meditation, journaling. And yeah. I used to just tell myself, you know, like in, I never used to think about it in training. It would just be on the way to the game that I'd get that that feeling of, oh, you might get injured or you might do your knee again. But then I got realized that that's just a thought. That's not what's actually true. So it was kind of like breaking it down. Yeah. What's in my control and what's not in my control and what's actually true and what's not. And I would just break it down like that. But uh, to be honest, man, as I've got older, I think you're a bit street smarter to um, what you need to do. Exactly. You don't have to run around the, yeah. sh- around the place like a bull in a china shop. You just have to do your job. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, uh, that just, like you said, comes at age. What was... Um... What was your thought after the second time you did it? Second time I did it, um, it was more the sinking feeling of what is about to come. I did it and I stepped off it and it just went. But the pain just went away straight away. And I thought, oh, I may have, but I've just tweaked it. But then it blew up at the game. I had the surgery and 
I'll, I'll be honest, I, I was a bit lost at the time because I was in Australia, I was 23, no one around me again. Yeah. Just um, a lot of dark times because it's like a 12 month rehab if you do it, you know, they say nine yeah. to 12 months. Um, nine to 12 months, yeah. And, and it just questioned me again of if I want to go down this road again because the first time I did it I was 18. So I did it then at 23 and I did it at 25. Yeah. What's been your wrist injury? I would say my shoulder. Um, it was, it was. Uh, I think it was an AC joint. Is it AC mm-hmm. joint? I think I ruptured the, all the ligaments off my shoulder, and it was the heart. It, it was a uh, yeah. It was, I had I've had I've had knee surgery, but just a small keyhole surgery a few months. It wasn't anything crazy, but the shoulder surgery I think was the worst one. I just actually came back from one of the biggest tournaments, Asian Cup of Thailand, mm. which is like the Euros um, over here, yeah. in, equivalent the Euros, and. Literally my first, my second game back with my team, and just just popped, just literally fell on it. Someone fell on top of me, and my shoulder just went like up. I thought it was collarbone, but I said no, it's just your AC joint just gone. Yeah, wow. Yeah, just completely. Yeah, I got a surgery on it completely. Yeah, you can probably see it. It's, yeah, it's see completely it really ruptured. Right. It's uh, it's it's okay now for mobility and all stuff like that, but um, at the time I think it was four or five months just. Just because you know to try to get back running on it to have you know to be able to push off on it to run properly it was I think it was the worst injury I had I, I could play football with the boys now and again but I just couldn't compete yeah um to play with the team just just because like it wasn't ready all the time and the hardest part was I did it at the start of the season so I missed literally half the season just uh, just by sitting out and that's that's probably the worst injury I've had yeah yeah been lucky with injuries to be fair so. That's a great one. But to be fair, it seems like yeah. you like what would you say your playing weight is? What are you playing at normally? Seventy two kilos. Yeah. It's a good so weight. I'm just well, I'm one one eighty, so it's a good weight for me in terms of um being out here in Thailand. You know, when I first came to Thailand, being a gen boy, I was just on a weight all the time and I remember just trying to get big and trying to get strong. But so true. I think I first came out I came out here and I was eighty kilos. I remember eighty kilos and um. Yeah, just too heavy. I think in terms of being back in 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 Wales or in, in Britain, and you know, you want to be big and strong for the challenges. But here in Thailand, the, the game is so fast and so mm. you know, it's on the floor. You don't really use you know the size so much. So I just I just year after year, I just kept on getting smaller, smaller. You know, yeah. you kind of just with the heat and you know, the humidity as well. Um. Yeah. Now the last I would say the last five six years, I've been at seventy two kilos, seventy three wow. kilos. So it's it's a good way. Yeah, feel good. Yeah. Definitely, mate. Definitely. And obviously, I think with age as well, the, the, the older you get, the more experienced you become. You know what you need to do. Don't I don't really go and just start lifting weights anymore. Oh. Just, you know, with the way the training is now, with all the movement specific stuff and plyometrics and all the yeah. the functional stuff, it's, you know, it makes more, it's, it's, it helps with injury prevention as well. So we were talking about before this podcast as well, just, um, you know, your career, like at the moment, you, you were obviously nine years with Bangkok and then moved over to your new yeah. team <clears throat> the last three months. Is it Lump? How do you pronounce it again? Sorry, Lump Lumpur Warriors. So <clears throat> it's one of those ones where. So they're new in the league. Um, came up last year. Uh, I've been with Bangkok and I, had the um, top three team in the in the country really for the last nine to ten years. So that's that's where I was at, and I was really doing really well. They were the team, being captain, vice captain, you know, club captain as well, and and my contract ran out last season in December and. And yeah, I was going to stop playing. So three months ago, I was going to stop playing. Obviously, at the moment, I'm doing my UEFA license. And, you know, two kids, finish building my house on the island in Samui and I have a lot of stuff outside of football as well that I'm working on. So I was going to stop just because I thought, you know, it was time to enjoy my family. I just had a new baby in December mm-hmm. as well. Newborn baby. So the timing, I thought, was right. But um, yeah, I just spoke to my family again in December and, you know, my wife said to me, you know, you sure you want to stop? You're only 33 years old, you know, physically. And honestly, I would say physically, I'm still very good. You know, I win all the all the testing. You know, they call me James in London, Thailand, because all the testing I win, all the big tests, your yo-yo, the fat test, every every test, I'm still number one all the time. And that's just the way I looked out of my body, really. I, I, I've always been like that. It doesn't matter if, you know, I play or I don't play. I'm always trying to take care of my body the best possible. And, and the, my friend and family said, just have another challenge, just another year. Why not try something different? Maybe you might enjoy it because you've been in one surrounding for so long. I wasn't really open to like trying to do something else. Mm. I'll play I'll play with another team. So yeah, I had three, four offers, solid offers. I had a lot of interest, but 
um, Lampoon is in Chiang Mai, and if you know anything about Thailand, mm. the two places to live in, Ch- in in Thailand is either Bangkok or Chiang Mai because it's the oh. biggest city. Apart apart from the island, and obviously yeah. I'm from the island, Koh Samui, and and yeah, Lampoon they came up last year, and you know they got. They got a great project ahead of them. They're you know, building a new stadium, a new training ground. The you know the the investors are putting money into the team and and yeah. So I decided to came up here in January and, and yeah, it's been a good a good good three months. I've you know been enjoying it and signed an eighteen months contract. So let's see what's going to happen. But let's see. I'll be thirty five by that time. So I think I think I might call a day after thirty five. So let's let's see. But I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, and still. Still fit, so no no injuries. So I'm just gonna keep going as long. I'm just gonna take it month by month, year by year. Now I'm not gonna look too far ahead. Really, just gonna enjoy the moment. Amazing, I love that. Be enjoying the moment, being present, and you never know the way you're going with these testings and and your fitness, making <laughs> your forty odds. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I honestly, I think thirty five, thirty six. That's good to me. Be on the beach. The house is ready. That the kids are gonna be. Gr- I, I think, like we said about sacrifice. You know, I just. You know, I'm here now, obviously in Chiang Mai, my family just actually went back to the island. So, you know, I said to my wife that it's it's good to keep on playing, but I don't want to be away from them for months because Yeah. You know, it's 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 not it's not good to keep them traveling around as well. So family is important and I think, you know, I've always they've always put me first in terms of football. So you know I I'll I'll play for another year and I think then it's time to put the family first. Maybe we we'll go traveling around the world for a year too. Oh mate, amazing. Well you definitely earn it. you've earned it and you've worked your butt off and um this is this is our time is about to run out, but it's been yeah. Just carry on. Oh, if you want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go on. We can... We'll keep rolling, and then uh, we'll kick it on after this as well. But um, mate, it's been it's been actually amazing because it's just great to see what you've done. You know, like like we talked about your family now a little bit, but you know, like you say, you're making sacrifices, and I think people don't understand that concept with with sports. You like you know, you, people move to other clubs, move to locations, and there's a family yeah. of kids that come with that. And you know you've got to look after both sides of the party. Then yeah, yeah. I got married four years ago, so you know now I've been with my wife. Well, we've been together for seven, eight years, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty lucky that she's obviously half Thai as well. She knows the culture, she knows the situation in Thailand, she knows how I am in terms of my football and how my mentality is, and she's fully supported. She's an actress, so she knows Amazing. um that you know the sacrifice to go into hard work and stuff like that. And, and yeah, so and it's lucky as well because her work is very much, um, how I would say, is very flexible. She doesn't have to be in one place at the same time. So we were lucky because we've been living in Bangkok for the last seven years. So the moving around, it wasn't so much. We have, we have a house in Bangkok. We have a house on the island. So we, because obviously my missus is an actress over here in Thailand, and you know she's, she's uh the last I say three years. I'm um, obviously having two kids now. She's kind of decided to stop. Uh, with the work in terms of doing the actual filming of of movies and TV shows and and she's still doing events and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, obviously I know she's given up a lot for for the family in terms of that. But um, she's enjoyed traveling. Obviously Chiang Mai being a part of the country, she really want to come and stay and and visit and this is an amazing place to live for the kids as well. So we're taking this as like a a year yeah. out in in terms of experience of traveling and seeing something different in Bangkok because obviously we have a home in Bangkok and in Samui. So yeah, it's been really good three months. She was up here for three months with the kids. They've gone back now for another month until my season finished. But yeah, it's, 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 it's like I said, family comes first now for me. Obviously football, you know, you're at the very end of, of your career. I still give 100%. I'm still professional. I do everything properly. But obviously you have to take into consideration with you know, other people around you and you know, family for me now is, is number one. So true. Do, do you, I was going to ask you something about football. It's amazing as well. There's so many avenues I can actually ask about that with football, with your partner being an actress, you know, dealing with the, the limelight of that. There's two superstars in one house. How do you deal with that? <laughs> yeah, no, actually, it was, it was, it was crazy because, um, like, when I first met Taya, I didn't actually know who she was and, and she didn't know who I was. But um, uh, she's one of the biggest stars in, in Thailand. In, in in the industry, you know, when we first met, she was one of these uh, actresses that's been around since she was 12, 13, being in big movies, big uh, big TV shows, and, and yeah, when we first when we first met, we first kind of got together. As um, I was actually in the moment, I was playing for the national team, so obviously the media coverage around me was was quite a bit as well, and and yeah, we kept it quiet for the first I would say year. Mm-hmm. Um, just because we don't want to obviously um, put pressure on ourselves and 
and the people around us and our family. But uh, once the media found out, yeah, it was it was, it was nice. It was nice because the media both know our characters and both know who we are and both know our personalities. So they were really, you know, the media can break out, they break you or make you. And we're lucky enough for me and for Taya, the media was fully supportive and and they were very nice to us. And and yeah, it was it's been a, it's been an incredible like seven years really together and hopefully you know many more. Amazing, amazing. I love it. I love it. There's um, another question as well. Do you ever find as well, as, as you've got older now and matured as a footballer, um, it's when you start looking around the changing room and you were once that young now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something, you know, the funny thing is about that is I've always been the joker. I've always been the one who's always kind of tried to make sure like, you know, I joke with the youngest boy in the room to the senior boy, to the foreigners, because obviously speaking two languages and, yeah. and being that middle person for everyone. Um, in Thailand and in other cu cultures in Asia, you know, the, the young yeah. boys always respect the senior guys just because of the way they are in Thailand and, and, and of, of course, our Asian country. But I always said to the young boys, just just pretend I was a foreigner. So you can treat me exactly how you want. You can banter me, you can do everything. Yeah, yeah. And they, they take it seriously, mate. They, they joke me all the time. They're always, <laughs> always pranking me. But uh, no, it's... it's it's good. I always, it feels like it, it keeps me young. I think that's, that's the one thing that my wife and people around me ask me the most about what I think I'll miss when I finish football. I don't think I'll miss football in terms of the game itself just because I've given so much to the game. I've, I've given, I've given to the game to the point where I know that when I stop playing, I've given everything and I would have no regrets. Amazing. And I think that was the one thing that I was worried myself most if, if I did have to stop one day or if I, I did stop would I look back and have any regrets? But, you know, every day in training is 120%. Everything I do outside of football is about football. And and I know the moment I walk away from the game, it's, I won't want to be back playing, if you know what I mean. I just know for a fact that I've given everything. But I think I just missed the changing room and the banter with the boys. Yeah. I think that's the one thing I miss the most. I said to, them, I said to my missus, when, when I go on holiday for a month or two months and I don't see, speak to the boys, I said, I look forward to going back to pre-season just to see the boys. Yeah. Just to have that that bad in the changing room, so I think that's what I miss the most. I think, and and being a senior boy now, I said, like I said, you know, I'm 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 always in the middle with all the banter and all the jokes. So it's it's always nice to uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's nice to be the young boy one time when everyone picks on you, and still being a senior boy <laughs> and everyone still picks on you. So it, it it's good, it's good, it's a good environment to be in, especially the culture in Thailand, because everyone's kind of like a family club over here. I know in in Europe and UK is different. You kind of like. You're there, but then you're kind of by yourself. But here, you know, people always have dinners together, team dinner. We, we do it once a week and stuff like that. So it, it's, it's a culture, really. Amazing. And you need to build that to, to have a successful team. Yeah. Got culture. Yeah. Um, I'll be I'll be in around football, hopefully, when I finish with my, doing my badge and, and stuff like that. But I think that's the one thing. I think if I take, take away from the game, if I if I step away from the game for a few years, I think that's what I miss the most. It's, uh, it's, I, think, I think you'll miss, them. You'll miss that as yeah. well when you eventually yeah. help. Oh, mate, the, the the banter you get from from rugby, like the joking and that, you can't, I can't, like, if you've never been in that environment, it's hard to explain to someone. Like, It's it's hard, yeah, it's hard to explain thing, to people. The things that goes on, the things that people say to each other, sometimes it's like a no limit, there's no line. Like, yeah, it's, you it is. Sacked if you're in an office doing that, you know. Of course, if it's, if it's a camera, I think a lot, a lot of the boys would get sacked and arrest, I'm sure it is, but um, <laughs> it's, it's the way it is, you know, it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a culture within football and rugby and, I think, you know, you bring the people together and I think, you know, people always look back and say, oh, you remember that time? You remember that time? You know, yeah. I don't really think in any other working environment, I don't think it's as good as being a professional sports. Mm. How's the family as well? I know, I know Jesse and that. Are they all over there? Or are they sending Yeah, so Jess is, Jess is on the island. So obviously we're both, we're both from Koh Samui. Um, my house in Koh Samui is finished now last year. Jess is there in Koh Samui. My mum was over here. Um, I was in Chiang Mai, but she goes, no, I'm going to go to your house in Koh Samui, all right? So she was by the pool <laughs> for like a month. Um, so she enjoyed that. But yeah, the family, I always try to bring my mum over. She always say, oh, do you want to go back to Bujan? I'm like, I'd rather just fly you out to Thailand yeah, yeah. and me go back to Bujan. So um, the family, well, Jess is doing well. He's been here. I brought him over here, I would say around six years, five, six years ago, just to give him um, a different life. And obviously Bujan, I think he... He wanted to come back over and um, he lived with me for the first two, three years in Bangkok. And now he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's out there doing his own thing now. He's, uh, he's, he's, he has a band, he's doing music. He has a bar now. He opened a bar recently in Koh Samui. So, um, yeah, he's doing well. He's doing good. I don't think he's coming back to Regina anytime soon. So. <laughs> it's just amazing, mate, to know 
that so many people, like I was speaking to a couple of days before, so many people from Bridgend have actually kicked on and done something as well. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, it's pretty impressive. A lot. I've, uh, I a lot of people my my year in school and a lot of my friends you know a lot a lot of them are living in America a lot of them obviously John Brown one of my mates from school um in terms of being from Jen is in America Alex Quinn obviously one of my close mates in school as well he's in he's in Dubai now he's living there so you know a lot of people are, are around the world and, and it's quite interesting to um to say that a lot of people left for Jen that seem to come back when they're around thirty. So I'm not sure why that is. I, I'm not sure if it's like a 30 thing where around, get around 39, 29, 30, they kind of head back to either Bridget or back to the UK. So uh, like yeah, you just said to me now, you came back this year. What, why, what's, 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 the, uh, what's the reasoning about coming back to the UK? Mm. Well, well, for me, it was coming back just for the opportunity after the World Cup. I got an offer to come okay. here. You know what? One last crack of the, crack of the whip. Um, whilst doing it, and you know, still got my my visa. Well, a permanent residence still in Australia, so I can always go back there, and it's still a definite option at some stage because I got a house there. Um, I've got a lot of things still stuck over there. I got my dog there. I still miss my dog, so I want to get him at some stage because I love my dog. Yeah. So a lot of things. What's uh? Where do you see your future? Good question. Good question. I do like Manchester, though. I do like it here, but I um. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one, isn't it? It's a yeah, tough one. Because all I'm doing the, is, uh, is I'm enjoying the moment. I'm enjoying the present. Like you spoke about earlier, yeah. I'm enjoying every moment. Yeah. When that stage comes, it comes. But um, yeah, man, I'm just, there's a lot of a lot of gratitude towards you as well, Mika. Like really, really proud. Like I know, obviously different ages in school, but always knew of you and knew you to say hello. I knew your brother, but like, just really, really appreciative of what you've done. And um, I hope you really know that, mate. No, I appreciate it, mate. Uh, you know what? It's, it's a funny one, Ollie, because I actually follow your career for a long time. I've still, obviously, we, I remember you back in school being that small little fullback. Uh, I'm still somehow, small, you know, <laughs> I know, mate. I've seen you haven't grown much, to be fair. <laughs> but uh, no, mate, I, I knew I knew there was, uh, you were going to make it in some sort of capacity, whether it's in the UK or back here or, or in Australia. And, Happy to see them so well, man. And obviously, still playing now. Just enjoy the moment. I think. Uh, I think we can both look back one day and say to ourselves that you know we gave it everything. And and uh, there we go. I think we could probably say in a nice little way that we probably got all we deserve. So definitely, definitely. Well, one thing I like to wrap up on the podcast before is I just always ask them what you're grateful for. But you've said a lot of things. But I'm very great. What are you grateful for, Mika? Wow, well, I would probably say you know first. I I have to say, you know, family, obviously, that's what I'm grateful for now. You know, everything comes with family. But, you know, I, before, obviously, I before I had kids, before I met Taya, you know, I think I've always got to be, I, I always say I'm grateful for the opportunity I had to play football at the highest level. I mean, just, 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 just that, really. I think a lot of people either don't enjoy their work or do stuff that they, you know, either enjoy or don't get paid well and, I think I'm I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I've had for over the last fifteen years to do the things I love every single day, to wake up in you know in the sun, to play football in this weather, and to meet the people I have met. I'm just grateful for my life, really. I think you know financially I'm very stable now, and I think everything just you know I I can't look back and say I have been unlucky in any way, shape, or form. So that's that's where I, I'm just grateful for everything. Really, obviously family is number one, but. Yeah, I say just for everything, the whole package the last 15 years, you know, I couldn't have probably, like I said, written a better story for myself or or done it in any better way. So just grateful for that, really. And like I said, everything from now on is just going to be a bonus for me. And obviously, you know, there's plenty of years left ahead of me in another different chapter of my life and different things. But that's 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 to come. And, and the football chapter is coming to a close pretty soon. And, you know, I could probably look back then and say, you know, play the highest level, play Thailand national team, you know, play for Wales when I was younger, you know, I've pretty much done it all. So I'm I'm just grateful for that, really, just for the opportunity to to do what I've, I've done what I love. Mm, I love that. That's amazing, man. I'm grateful for this opportunity oh. to talk and connect again. It's been a long time, but someone yeah, asked me... Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. Someone asked me earlier, who, have you, who are you podcasting? I said, there's a guy, a friend from school, Mika, he plays in Thailand. I said, he's probably one of the most famous Welsh people that you may not know... <laughs> That's the way it makes There was a, there was an article about that, I think, and uh, the famous Welsh, one of the most famous Welsh person you never heard of. I was like, oh, that's a good title, but um, 
but no, I'm mean, grateful for everything. I appreciate this chat, mate. You know, it's good to catch up with you and uh, yeah, for sure. And yeah, you're doing a great thing. I've been watching it. You've been you know, just keep inspiring people. And of course, you know, I think as an athlete, we go through ups and downs. And I think it's important to see the when the moment when we were down, how we dealt with that as well. Not just seeing, you know, the the highs all the time. You know, obviously there's there's many lows, and I think we both can relate to the lows and and coming through that. And I think it's important for us to inspire the next generation. Definitely, brother. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. All right, mate. Appreciate your time as well today. Take care.